I hate to begin today's episode so emotionally, I really, really do, but the sunset and all, it only enhances the vibes of your bones, so I, I can't believe it. A mere five or so episodes ago, we set out on a goal, a dream, to build one of my most beautiful storage buildings of all time, and, and here we are, on the second floor, watching the sunset, taking it all in, and finishing it all up, at least on the inside, right here, together, today. Yes, that's right, today it's moving day. We'll talk storage organization tips and tricks and throw the final details on our build. At the end, I've got a special treat in store, so tap like, sit back, and stay tuned. So in between episodes, I've done a little bit more detailing. You tell me if you could maybe notice any of the differences of the little games about the difference. Ah, uh, yes. Picking up right up where we last left off, before we can move anything into Brent's new marvelous storage building, there are a couple of final details we need to get in. Hmm, so I guess it's been a while since I've come over here and admittedly harvested this whole thing, but it definitely seems like a bunch of my bees have gone missing. I... Uh, Anyways, we're over here for the real deal. One of Minecraft's finest detailing tricks of all time, the one that I hinted to right at the end of the last episode, it comes in the form of a candle. These things are beautiful. Oh, Bonzo, dear Bonzo, you're going to need to be very, very cautious around this thing. Mobs fall from the sky. I fear that you may get blown up. In fact, the longer we idle around over here next to a giant creeper spawner in the sky, I fear the greater risk your life has. Let's get out of here. So up here, inside of the storage building, right at the end, I kind of hinted big time as to what I want to add to this beautiful thing. We've got a lot of open air on the inside, and that is very intentionally designed. Over here inside of the crafting table, with a little bit of bones, we can make a ton of white dye. Then, after that, we can go ahead and take that white dye, smash it into the stained glass right here, and then actually take that stained glass and convert it all over into paints. Minecraft is a beautiful game for many different reasons. There are so many different cool, beautiful things you could do inside of your world. And one of the most beautifulest things of all time that you could do, cool as well, is start with a little bit of polished deep slate. We'll go down into a wall. That's pretty cool. Then we'll back down a little bit and say maybe a chain right there. We'll say maybe a chain right there and a chain right there. After that, it's time for the real star of the show, the glass panes. Chandeliers. A chandelier is hands down one of the coolest things you could add to any Minecraft build. We're gonna start it off nice and simple. We have our ceiling connection. It's dead centered right there in the middle of that section. Then we taper down into the chandelier itself. I start out with a couple glass panes and I go in a square. This is my favorite chandelier setup of all time. Then I go ahead and start hanging it down a little bit more, move directly underneath this thing, and basically repeat the square. Too soon. Too soon I messed up. I, I, I always do this. I feel like every single time I build a chandelier after it's been a minute since not building a chandelier, I always mess it up. I need silk touch pickaxe and inventory at all the moments, I swear. Anyways, chandelier. We're going to go ahead and paint it all up all over the place. With these types of things, it's quite simple. The more panes, the better. Until there's too many panes. And too many panes? Oh, no, definitely not. Look at that thing. It tapers out slowly but surely. And then, once I put a bunch of these beautiful things on it, light them up, oh, it'll, it'll illuminate the sky too, it'll look so good. Down here on the bottom, I want to get a little bit more fancy though, and maybe have something cool hanging off of it, so maybe we start with like a long hang down in the middle, then, let's see, maybe diagonal, we do like a medium hang down. Alright, so far so good, looking quite beautiful, and then finally, on the very edges of this thing, we'll do one single glass pane hanging down. So after that, we end up with a little something that looks like that. It looks like the chandelier is almost dripping out or whatever. Sure, valid. It's a little bit low. I can hit my head on it. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The logistics. I'm tall anyways. Like, whew, that's beautiful. If only I had one more and one more. Oh, hi, uh, and almost forgot, while I'm up here, I might as well double up on this calcite, make the ceiling look a little bit less flat. I think, in fact, I know doubling up the calcite will instantaneously make the ceiling look a little bit more intriguing from the ground. Oh, yes, and how could I forget? Also, the candles up on the top, and maybe we do three on those sections, and then, like, one on the corners right there, and then up top, we keep it nice and low. In the future, once we go to the end, you already know, and rods, they're gonna come in these chandeliers, too. All right. 
Alright, I um, almost ran all the way out of all of the string that I need. So now I have to go over to the spider farm. But that means that this right here is going to be the very first view of the storage building from across the canyon. Oh, I can't wait. How is the build looking? I haven't looked at it at all. Oh, look at that. It's not only the build, but the whole base. The whole base, the build and the base. Oh, it looks so good. I gotta check the top of the mages tower soon too ASAP, but look at that. I feel so built up and big. Because it is. Alrighty, as I start to finish up all of these chandeliers, it's feeling more cozy, romantic, dramatic, and just more finished and beautiful inside of this build. Look at the ceiling now, and then the chandeliers breaking up the plainness and open space. It looks so good. Candles are a beautiful thing. You can put these things anywhere inside of your build. Always keep them in mind when including myself. This is sad and awkward. I have six honeycombs left to my name. I will make a bee farm soon inside, proper, automatic, everything like that. And I want to add like blue candles on top of the diamonds or maybe cyan and maybe like red candles sitting around. They look like bottles or something and yellow ones too. And you know, just in general, more candles all over the place. But we'll come back one day. I spy with my little eye one treat, a present from an Enderman man from last episode. <laughs> Alright, so with these big chandeliers in here, that is like basically the proper part of the build that I really wanted to finish up and kind of end on a cliffhanger last episode. It looks so cool. Also, the golden number, three all over the place, the chandeliers, oh, it's, it's beautiful. But I think it's also moving time. Moving time, item frames. We're gonna need a whole lot of these things today. Good thing I've been using this cow farm like nonstop and I have leather on leather on leather. I think I even somewhere inside of this world definitely have even more leather. I think like maybe a couple more stacks. So we're pretty much set. Now there is one thing that I'd like to talk about real quick and that is going to be the outside of the build. Actually, I'll talk about that later. Storage, organization, tips, tricks, hacks, and how I usually do it. Our moving day journey, it all begins with labels. Actually, our moving day journey, it all begins with layout. If you're watching this episode for storage tips, tricks, organization hacks, and everything like that, I'm going to go ahead and assume that maybe you've already constructed your storage build and you just don't really know, like, the great way to put things inside of it. On the other hand, if you're just watching for fun, you're my best friend. So in the last episode, I talked a little bit about laying out the chest and what I was thinking. We called that area, christened it the library. That's kind of cool. Then over here is going to be like the main things kind of touched on that. And then I said overflow up top. But that, my friend, that's where everything has changed. First things first right here, conveniently, I think all of the nether stuff we'll put in this hallway. Of course, with 35 chests on each side, we're going to have way more than just nether here. But that's going to be like the start. Then I was thinking maybe in the middle right here, I don't know, like eventually end things. I don't have very much right now. I think just sandstone, but whatever. That's a vision. Up top, upstairs here. With my general chest layout pretty much figured out, before I start moving things in, I'm going to use signs, walk around my building, and put words on those signs. Now these words, they are only temporary words. What I'm doing right now is I'm kind of running around and kind of trying to brainstorm basically where I want to put what. I was thinking maybe up top instead of overflow because when we're standing down here, we're going to be able to look up and see a whole ton of item frames. It might be lame to see a bunch of empty item frames. In fact, uh, actually, correction, it would be very lame to see a bunch of empty item frames forever. And also, when I'm standing around walking around up here, I feel like it might be more convenient, especially if I'm smithing armor, to have all of my valuable stuff right there. That way, from down low, we'll be able to see it in the frame and access it from up here, see it up here too. That'll be really cool. That's going to mean overflow storage is going to be moved to down here to the library. We're going to go ahead and label this hallway right here overflow storage. And I think in the long run, like maybe I have extra cobblestone. I'll just start throwing it in here and then put the item frame right on top of the chest. Once I start loading it up item frame layout. Okay, decisions, decisions. How I see it, we kind of have three different types of options and surprise, surprise. Was it a mere coincidence or was it planned out this entire time? Inside of the storage building, we're going to have all three main item frame layouts going on. Over here in this back hallway is the trickiest one, but it is most compact. You can put an item frame on the side of a turn chest just like that and access the chest as long as you can consistently, like, you know, actually hit the chest. 
Where this one kind of falls apart is if you have to like jump consistently to get the chest with an item frame in the way, it might be a little bit more difficult. You see, I'm trying right now and it's not working. But the big plus of this one is if you put your chest all in a way so you could like reach them kind of like this right here. Well, if you do it like that, it's going to be ultra compact and you can fit a whole lot of items into the least amount of space possible and still be able to label all of your chests. It just might be a little bit more annoying when you like accidentally turn an item. Now upstairs, using the secret entrance that I added in the last episode. Actually, you know what? Never mind. You never saw that. Top secret. Channel members can find all the secrets that I added to this building in a couple episodes. Number 70 is the world download. Upstairs is an easier way of laying out your item frames and compacting your chests. Upstairs, what we've got going on is we've got a staircase above a chest. And then right above that chest, we can put an item frame on the back of that staircase. That way, we're still able to, like, you know, properly label our chests and everything. But we now don't have any item frames on the chest. So you probably won't end up hitting the items and, like, you know, spinning them around pointlessly. Annoyingly. Now, our third and final way of doing things, and to be honest, I think probably my favorite way of doing things is what we're doing right down here, front and center, with all of our essential ingredients. We're going to have a chest turned long ways, and then we're going to put an item frame on half of that chest. Unfortunately, this way, and actually the way right upstairs, is definitely not like maximum efficiency when it comes to space, but at least aesthetically, I think this is pretty clean. Organization-wise, here's what I've cooked up. I think down here what I want to do is a bunch of wood and then a bunch of stone. Those are like my absolute essentials that I use in like practically any build. Over here on the flip side, I haven't labeled it quite yet, but I was thinking things like maybe dirt and then other like natural blocks. So like when I say natural, I'm thinking maybe like skulk and things like that. I feel like that'll be the ultimate vibe. What I also feel will be the ultimate vibe is taking all of these stripped logs and instead of like, you know, putting the plain old log in the item frame, maybe we'll use stripped logs to label things because they look like, at least to me, a little bit more stand out in my opinion. Now, how I like to do things is think about what I like to use the most. Also, I like to think about what looks like what and maybe not put those things right next to each other. So like, let's say jungle wood. We'll move jungle wood up there because it looks so similar to oak wood and then dark oak wood and spruce wood, whichever is which, we'll spread those out as well. When I'm doing my organization layouts, I like to put the things that I use the most like right in front of your eyes. This is actually an idea that I learned from the grocery store. All right, so not to get all conspiratorial, but actually it's not even a conspiracy. This is a proven and known thing. It's certified and 100% real. But in the grocery store, when you go there, Take a look next time at the things right in front of your face. Most likely, the things like eye level or approximately eye level, those are going to be like the expensive things, the things that the store really, really wants you to buy. Maybe up high or down low, they'll have like the cheaper things like, hey, yeah, you could buy it, but maybe like, just don't. And so, yeah, basically, it's all like streamline here. What do I want to be able to get a little bit quicker? Yeah, probably like these things and then cherry wood is beautiful, but I probably admittedly don't need it as much. So I'll put it up there. Now, when I organize my chest, at least when it comes to the wood types in the game, I definitely have room for like a chest of logs and then a chest of blocks. But me personally, I never end up having that much. Instead, how I like to do it in a way that I feel is a little bit more efficient anyways, is I like to put all of the wood variants inside of the same chest. So we're talking things like staircases, fences, trap doors, all of it. I take all the spruce ones and simply put them inside of the spruce chest. The dark oak, right inside of the dark oak. Pretty straightforward. How could I do it? I saw at least one comment on the last episode, at least one saying no anvils on the inside of the building, but like <laughs> basically a million on the outside. Yup, that's right. With an anvil, an item, a fun little trick. Maybe you've heard of it. Inside of this anvil, I can drop this item inside of here, and if I have extra levels, I can rename it. So for example, this strip spruce log is going to be spruce wood. I could name it. Now this is big fancy energy right here. You know me, I'm a fancy guy. I like to do things in a cool way. Oh, recipes. I love it. So what I think I'll do is I'll go ahead and do like maybe some of the stuff labeled. So because I'm fancy and because why not? Maybe like show off the concept or whatever. I'll go ahead and name an item inside of an anvil and then put it inside of the frame. If I was going to do this everywhere, it would get really expensive. It'd be fancy, but it'd be crazy, crazy expensive. We'll put it on the to-do list. Now, next to all of my individual specific wood types, I like to always have what I call a generic wood chest as well. That's the crafting table. Inside of the generic is things like chests or ladders or sticks. You know, basically the stuff that doesn't fit in with any type, specifically. Now I'm gonna come back and put the two nether types of woods right down there at the bottom. And then at the top, I was thinking maybe leaves and extra saplings. Maybe just every type in the top corner. 
So that's basically how all the wood stuff will end up. I'll come back for the other ones later. Next up, the stones. We kick it off with smooth stone and stone bricks right there. Both things that I tend to have a lot of. Speaking of a lot, I usually have tons and tons of cobblestone and then like berries, like mossy. So we'll do something like that. After that, deep slate. There's so much deep slate that I have in the world. Then we're going to slide over here to the stone cutter and turn one deep slate block into something random. Maybe the chiseled one. Usually, I end up crafting a lot of different deep slate variants for things like roofs, ceilings, whatever, and they kind of like clog up the normal ones, so I'll do that individually as well. After that, it's time for andesite, time for stinky rock bad, and then granite right there. Almost last, definitely not least, we'll put tough, and maybe in the future, probably, definitely, we'll have to rearrange this a little bit, make more room for that, and then calcite, please, give me, give me calcite bricks, uh, whatever. To finish it all off for now, we'll put dripstone up top, and then point to dripstone in the chest right next to it. Oh, and usually with these storage building things, I'm not, like, super crazy with it. Like, it says stone bricks right there, but I'll probably end up putting, like, other stone variant things in there as well. If you wanted to go ham with it, and again, probably I have the room for it, but if you want to go ham with it, you do an individual chest for every single item in the game. It's cool, it's awesome, but I mean, it gets crazy, crazy expensive. So once we're all tidied up with a single section, we're gonna end it with something that looks like this. I mean, it looks nice, it looks really good, but... Ugh, no, he doesn't. Light, make it bright, light those chests up, they will look even more beautiful. I think if I put a couple of lanterns in here, it will make all of my item frames and all the chests light up just a little bit more, and yeah, yeah, it definitely worked. They're definitely way more light than those ones. It looks good now. Now I have, like, proper light in here. If I want to get fancy, I can do a chain and make, like, them in an arch and everything, too, but yeah, there we go. Section number one done. It's time for the next. All right, so next up, I figured, hey, Bonzo, come with me. I figured uh, we got a present to last episode. Why not bring old Silk Touch out and pick that present up? We could use it. I need to get a better Silk Touch pickaxe. Remind me later, okay? Anyways, Silk Touch blocks like that. Maybe mycelium, whatever. This will be special dirt blocks. Maybe also pods, all whatever. Then we'll have a lot of extra room for dirt. I always have so much of it. Special dirt blocks includes things like rooted dirt, coarse dirt, whatever. Over here on the other side, we'll do maybe a little bit of sand right there. And then how about some sandstone as well? I feel like I might end up stocking up on a lot of it. Right next to all of this, we'll do gravel. And then maybe right next to gravel, I get a lot of them. A flint and... Well, no, no, no. Just plain old flint. Next up, maybe concrete powder. That could be cool. We'll put concrete powder there. Clay, mud, special mud, terracotta. So look guys, I don't know what it is about a storage building and organizing it and just doing all of that stuff But I always feel like this is like a very special moment in like in a series If you've noticed and I think maybe almost all of my series that I've ever done If you've seen any of the other ones, I usually try and do like at least the beginning of this process on camera I, it can't just be me, right? Like, I'm not the only one that feels like this is like a, a very crucial and monumental moment inside of a world. Please, please tell me I'm not crazy, please. I love this vibe of just like running around the world, taking a look at everything that I've had so far, realizing, oh shoot, I have a big gaping hole in these certain types of items. And yeah, yeah, really, you know, just like throwing the whole building together, organizing it and, you know, thinking about the future. Thinking about the future, I think I hinted at it a little bit in the last episode, but I've got a big plans going forward here. We're going to move into like a, like a whole new era of this world. Now that we actually have a proper storage building sorted out, figured out, and, you know, settled in. Ayo, hey hold up. I need clay. There's definitely got to be some clay down there, right? Clay, give me one block of clay. I just need a single, a singular, tiny, single piece of clay, please. Anyway. Not you. Really cool cave, a ton of fish, a little bit of gravel, granite, whatever you want to call it. There is no clay down here. Oh, come on. I mean, uh, hey, at least I get a really cool view of the base. That's pretty awesome. Wait a second, do I have any clay here? Ah, oh, that would have been a dream. Bro, if I went the other direction, literally the other direction than, than the one that I went, it was right here the whole time. I just need a little bit of clay. <laughs> 
Anyways, I've got plans, big plans, big dreams. Moving forward here, after this episode, I think we're gonna go ahead and take a break, or basically, well, I guess it's not much of a break if we basically essentially finish the whole build, but the outside of the build, I alluded to it earlier, I don't think we're going to worry about the outside of the build today, and we're definitely not going to worry about it in the next episode. We will come back in slowly and decorate the outside of the build as I start to move the base more around the build. You see, right now, I could jump in and put a bunch of plants and paths and whatever, and maybe I'll do some plants, but I don't want to go too crazy. I kind of want to see how I start to build the base in. You see, I have this vision of this build being like the heart and soul of our world, and I think it would be cool to have a bunch of different farms and things like almost surrounding it, looking towards this build. If that is my plan going forward, which definitely is... Well, in order to do that, it'll be a little bit of a slower process on the outside of the build. I hope you guys don't mind, and I hope you kind of get the vision. So, like, maybe for now, slowly but surely, I'll start, like, figuring out where I want to put trees and grow those in at least. Maybe tall tree right over there, and then maybe gigantic tall tree on the other side, make it symmetrical. And, of course, before the end of the episode, I'll clear up a little bit of some of this stuff, too. But, bones away, you're gonna get sick. Come in from the right. Now, let's do the valuables. Valuables, valuables, my favorite thing of all time. Up high, I figure we will put the very fancy, expensive things, and then a little bit lower, maybe like more low-key. I swear, somewhere else inside of this world, I've got more diamonds, don't worry about it. Also, inside of each chest, I'll put like the block variants as well, so like ores or maybe doors and trap doors. I can't believe it, I swear I've had a gold ingot before, I swear, I just, I can't find it. Gold ingot right there, copper ingot right there, the perfect trinity, it makes exact sense. Down here, down low, maybe a little bit of redstone, and I suppose the lapis right there. Up top, a very valuable and special amethyst, and the netherite right there, once we get it. After that, I guess nether quartz. Aha! Nether quartz and glowstone, it's perfect, the perfect trinity. Netherite, nether quartz, glowstone, all nethery, glowstone, eh, maybe a little bit less of a valuable, but kind of is, right? So it counts, it's cool. Now over here, downstairs, this whole section, I've since finished it up as well. What I was thinking about doing is having proper copper building blocks down here because I feel like that might be like, it might make sense. Then other copper stuff, like the stuff I haven't turned into blocks, I'll keep it up there. This whole section over here is kind of like a lot of natural blocks and then things that I might end up building with. And then over here, I've got a couple blank spaces for different skulk things. I'm gonna have like normal skulk blocks there, then like catalyst, uh, maybe the shrieker as well, I don't know. Basically, I'm gonna end up with a couple extra spots for storage up there, which I like. I'll come back in later and expand it when I need to. Mob drops, mob drops. This section over here will be dedicated to every single drop in the entire game. Now with this section, I want to dedicate a couple slots to things that I usually end up piling up on. Maybe things like different types of tools, like random spare junk swords. Doesn't necessarily have to be stone. Maybe bows, I get a lot of those. And then maybe like, I don't know, just other tools in general is kind of what that symbolizes. Also got to keep it in mind, I need to save a couple spots for things that I don't have quite yet, like gas tiers. Now this is tricky, uh, the thing with this is I have a couple different mob farms all around the world that are gonna be like, getting a bunch of drops, say the spider farm with a ton of string and eyes. What I think I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do it going forward is maybe let those farms run and then every once in a while I'll go around the world and do a quick like collect, maybe before every world download or something, and try and relocate a bunch of things to the spot. Of course, string, something like that, I easily have a double chest full I would think over at the spider farm. So I probably won't move at all. I just keep like a, a steady supply inside of this room so I could always like come over here and get it to use it for whatever I'm trying to do. Now, trying to think ahead here, I don't know how many other bad mob drops I'm gonna need to save space for. So maybe I skip a section and then I start doing things like like passive mob drops. Sugar, ooh, it symbolizes like potions or something. Maybe I should probably just get a potion instead and put it there, but for now we get it. Well, 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 that is an awkwardly terrible spot to be, lads. Please clear up. And you, dear friend who wants to chase me, no, you leave me alone, leave. Leave this premise and don't come back. Oh no, oh no, what did I do? You're all so like, you're just curious about to me, huh, huh? Well, I'm gonna need you to take out the leader so I don't get that bad omen effect. Go ahead and just, just do the thing. No, get the leader, not me. Get the leader, yep. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, yes, yes, slowly but surely you will take out the leader so I don't get the effect and then the rest of you, I'm sorry, your history, goodbye. Thanks for visiting, it's nice to see you.
food. When it comes to food, I don't know how I feel about actually storing food over here. I, I just don't know. For now, I guess we leave a chest, but maybe I won't even store food over here. I think I'm going to do one single box for every flower in the game. Now, I don't really remember how many plants we have in the game, but then this is going to start to move into, like, decorational things that I like to keep around, like maybe cobwebs and stuff. I might be able to finish that up with, like, a bunch of cobwebs and, you know, just random things that I collect over time. But for now, I think that's looking pretty solid. With all of this kind of starting to be solidly figured out, I can go ahead and get rid of that. And then on the other side, we get rid of that, too. I could see maybe some hanging signs in here being cool, kind of, like, labeling the general categories of, like, mob drops and items and then valuables and plants. So far today, while working on all of this, though, I am noticing one big thing that is completely missing from my building, and that's gonna be ender chests. A huge tip for you when you're doing your storage building organization and, you know, running around your world collecting up everything, is utilize shulker boxes and ender chests. You got yourself a shulker box, load that thing up, bring everything over to your building, and do it all at once. Ah, hi, just hit me. Another thing I can put down here is maybe, like, obsidian. Ah, uh, so yes, ender chest, ender chest. For now, I will make one ender chest and put you in... Where do I put you? I guess we put you right there for now, but I definitely need at least one more maybe in the back corner and then another one up top. Ho oh, ho, and look at that, inside of the ender chest, even more oak logs, completely forgot about you. All right, so next up, it's time for this nether hallway. Nether rack, we'll put it on the bottom. I'm definitely gonna need like two chests for that. Blackstone, absolutely need to store that here. And then basalt as well, front and center. It's in like the back of the build, right? But it's still very easy for me to run over and grab. That'll be good. Soul sand, that stuff is pretty cool. And then nether bricks, whew, those are fire. Look here, all in all, I've got blocks on blocks on blocks. This is a project that I'm going to have to work on, not only finishing up today, but like, but like definitely in between episodes, I'll make a travel, a trip over to the starter base at some point to grab even more stuff and store it up over here. What in the world do I do with all of these random extra blue and red blocks that I have, though? Like, I think I probably have some inside of the nether, too, where I was harvesting this whole biome up way earlier on. Like, <laughs> what do I do with them? What kind of build could I build? Ideas, please. Anyways, storage. Throughout today's episode, we've talked a whole lot about where I'm putting things and what I like to do and how I think about doing things. Hopefully, somewhere inside of this episode, you find yourself a little bit of storage building organization inspiration. Couple final things that I need to get in. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough yellow carbon for the vision, but I was looking around upstairs over here at the whole uh, smithing area, and it looks a little plain and open, so how about an extra rug? Hey, that's perfect. I like it. He's smiling. Oh, then over here, I realized like maybe right next to all of the ores and stuff, I should put valuable random things like smithing templates, maybe like horse armor, maybe even these shirts, at least for now. Maybe some of that stuff could be split up into like more individual chests though that might be cool after all the more item frames and items that i get in the more cool this thing is going to look from down here now as i walk around down here to close up an episode do an intro you've got items all over the place and i don't know it just looks so cool items inside of item frames are one of the best looking things in the entire game somebody please stop me i can't help myself i keep going Anyways, this special at the end of the episode, it's time. I can't believe it has been so long. The shaders. We start with the basic. From the inside of the build, it's glowy. It's vibey. Sunset time. It's like perfect timing. Oh, look at how good that looks. The minimal shaders. I'm thinking about maybe starting the episodes back up with shaders again. And maybe like this time around, keeping with these minimal ones. I love those insane, beautiful ones. But I saw a couple of people say it's not like as Minecrafty, And you know, I get the vibe. I understand. These minimal shaders, though, on the other hand, like, whoo, that's the Minecraft vibe. Bonzo, you look beautiful up there, buddy. The inside of the building, it looks so good. It's alive. It's wonderful. And now keep in mind that this build, I'm going to make it like a little bit of a work in progress, slowly. Like on the outside, on the inside, we'll come back and add more and more decorations. Oh, with shaders. It's beautiful. It's marvelous. I need a view. Bonzo, Bonzo, my boy, you sit right there. Stay there. I got to go get a view. You have no clue how long, how long I've been waiting for this view. I didn't want to spoil it, like in between episodes off camera or nothing. So I haven't seen the build at all with any shaders yet, but... Oh, oh, it feels so big. It's so grand. It's wonderful. The campfires, they light up so nicely. And the lanterns do. Wow. Oh, he's gorgeous. 
Oh, it's gorgeous, but wait, there's more complimentary. So these are the crazy shaders. The really realistic ones with like the fancy clouds and everything and the beautiful building. <laughs> oh, the beautiful building. I'm in love. I'm in love with this thing. And the cool thing is, it only will get better from this point on. Whoa, it only will get better as I start to fill in the area around the build with like plants and, and buildings and scenery. It'll, oh, it'll fit right in. It'll blend in and <laughs> I'm so proud of myself. Ah, uh, slowly but surely we add more to it. I can see it now. Maybe mob head data pack something. Oh, slowly but surely it'll, it'll just be ever evolving, only improving from this point right here. Ha, it's wonderful. Thank you all so much for taking part in the Sword Saga. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. You watching, your ideas, comments, everything like it. Walking around, huh? Looking around at the storage building. You got a fire idea to add? You call it down below. Who knows? Stay tuned. Over the course of the next couple episodes, maybe more details will just pop up slowly but surely. Patrons get early access to the episodes. Channel members get world downloads, including this next one on episode number 70. It's been me, Waddles, Cathedral V2, forever.